On December 30th, 2015, 500 Mars gunmen assaulted the Zhitomir confectionery factory, destroying equipment, beating up factory workers, and robbing warehouses. The police just stood behind the gate and looked at what was happening. Arsen Novakov, Minister of Interior Affairs, ordered the policemen to keep out. The attack was made in order to seize the factory from its owner, the American investor Igor Boyko. The masterminds behind were MP Sergei Pashinsky, a member of Narodny Front, People's Front Party, like the Minister Vakov and the former Prime Minister of Ukraine, Arseniy Yatsenyuk. Pashinsky started preparations for the assault shortly after the Revolution of Dignity in Kiev. At the expense of many young people's lives, some crooked politicians rose to power, taking advantage of the situation to seize it. Some investigators say it was Sergei Pashinsky who organized protester shootings during the Revolution of Dignity. This video shows the protesters stopping and searching a car and recovering a silenced mounted sniper rifle. The next moment, Pashinsky appears, puts the rifle back into the car, sets the driver free, and whisks the car with the weapon away to an undisclosed location. Among the men accompanying him was the MP Yuri Sabalta. Pashinsky instructs him just before he jumps behind the wheel and drives away. Now Yuri Sabalta is the personal bodyguard of the Minister of Interior Affairs, Arsen Novakov. The sniper rifle incident is just one of the numerous smoky affairs in the biography of the MP Sergei Pashinsky. In the early 2000s, he was the deputy director of the biggest state bank, Ashad Bank. Pashinsky granted loans to bogus firms that never repaid them. In 2002, he was arrested for embezzlement of over $4 million. Pashinsky managed to avoid incarceration owing to connections of Viktor Medvedchuk, a major corrupt official whose child's godfather is Putin, the president of Russia. After the Orange Revolution in 2004, Medvedchuk helped Pashinsky become the director of the major state company, Ukur Reserve. Together with his business partner Sergei Tishenko, he stole over $100 million. Pashinsky invented various fraudulent schemes, including sugar smuggling, imports of Brazilian tainted beef to Ukraine, and overall rent-seeking behavior. Pashinsky was fired from the state company, and the prosecutor's office opened a number of criminal cases against him, with incarceration looming again. In 2006, Pashinsky became the MP, though, starting to make active use of the status for asset grabbing. With a group of gunmen, he attacked Turbo Atom in Kharkiv in 2007. The assault came at the behest of the Russian oligarch Konstantin Grigorishin. While Yulia Timoshenko served time in jail, Pashinsky became one of the most influential members in her party. All the party finances were in his hands, and much of them he stole. After Viktor Yanukovych was overthrown and Timoshenko was set free, Pashinsky and some other leaders had to leave her party since she realized she had been deceived for many years. Thus, the political project Narodny Front came to be, headed by Arseniy Yitzhenyuk, Alexander Turchinov, Arsen Novakov, and Sergei Pashinsky. The party managed to become the parliamentary majority by means of voter bribery and unfair peer practices in the 2014 election. Arseniy Yitzhenyuk became the prime minister of Ukraine through skimming and blackmailing his political partners. Pashinsky was appointed the head of the defense committee of the parliament. His friend Arsen Novakov became the minister of interior affairs, and Pavel Petrenko also a member of the party the Minister of Justice. This opened a great opportunity for business and property grabbing. At first, Narodny Front Party started to use its power for corruption, blackmail, and illicit enrichment. ALC Zhitomir Confectionery, a farming company in Kirovograd, a fat and oil mill in the region of Odessa, Ukrainian National Lottery, and a huge market in Odessa, fell his victims. Pashinsky's friends, namely the Minister of Justice and the Minister of Interior Affairs, have his back in all his criminal activity. While their party stays in power, they make every effort to grab as many factories, property, and money as possible. In addition, Pashinsky makes money on military orders through corrupt practices. He has taken the state defense enterprise Ukraboron Prom under his control. Pashinsky makes his 24-year-old son a manager in this enterprise, despite the latter 
having no relevant experience. Pashinsky's criminal organization has tightened grip over all military orders, including arms and military equipment manufacture, food procurement for soldiers, and military uniform production. All these brings him huge profits. Now, the war with Russian aggressors and separatists is raging in eastern Ukraine. The state spends $2 million on military needs, every day, most of this money goes into the pockets of Pashinsky's gang. Meanwhile, the USA and Canada provide billions of dollars worth of military assistance. These fraudulent politicians just steal the property and money of Ukrainian army. All this happens under the passive eye of the president of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko. He flies on visits to the USA and EU, asks for money for defense and war with Russia, albeit allowing Pashinsky's gang to steal this money. Nobody in Ukraine cares that such a bankrupting owner as Pashinsky holds an office that high in the defense of the country. In 2014, Pashinsky, with his business partner Sergei Tyshenko, stole petrol in store for warring Ukrainian army. $200 million worth of petrol was simply stolen. For two years, neither the Prosecutor General's Office of Ukraine nor the Security Service of Ukraine could solve this case and seize Pashinsky. President Poroshenko may have his interest in this business, it seems. These people put their personal interest before those of the country. Actually, Poroshenko is not fighting corruption, but just imitates the fight to keep getting financial assistance from the US and EU. While Ukrainian soldiers die in the war, Pashinsky and his mafia group make their blood-stained money, and Sergei Pashinsky came a long way in this atrocious business.